I didn't make a COVID video in January. That's the first time I haven't done a monthly video since this all began. But don't worry, because while January was very different to December, February has been very similar to January, so this video will conveniently cover both months, with increased powers of hindsight. The lead up to January this year was very similar to how it was in the year before. Cases were shooting up, Christmases were ruined, and this time more than last, Omicron ripped through every part of England, and I knew several people this time around who suffered with it. My own Christmas plans were changed because of it, yet the way we've dealt with it this January couldn't have been any more different. Last year we locked down and remained locked down for months. This time we didn't do anything. The world carried on as if all this was over. We carried on wearing masks in shops, yes, and we carried on isolating if we got the disease, but other than that it was business as normal for England in January 2022. Since the start of the year though, we have passed two major milestones. Late in January, the need for masks was done away with. Yet this didn't feel like a major moment, because some were already not wearing masks before then, and this number has slowly grown since the start of the year. By the time the need for masks was done away with, many people weren't wearing them already. Even now, over a month since that change, there are still some who do, and I still wear one out of respect for others when I'm in shops and also because I'd hate to get COVID now, when it feels like we're so close to it being over. And the other major change this year has come about in late February, when the need to self-isolate was done away with. That's big news. It means if you get COVID, then you don't have to isolate. You can carry on as normal, spreading it to all your friends and colleagues like you would with any other disease that you get. You're still being encouraged to isolate, but this still feels like the moment that COVID ended once and for all, because any precautions that people take from now on, they do because they want to, and not because they have to. So why is it so different? Why didn't we respond like this a year ago? I think it's because a few important tipping points have been reached. For a start, we didn't have any vaccines a year ago, and thanks to the vaccine rollout since, we all now have a degree of resistance to the disease. Some of us two doses of vaccine, most of us three, so if we do get it, it should be less harmful to us. Meanwhile, Covid's been getting less dangerous, especially with the recent Omicron variant that seemed to be everywhere over Christmas. So our resistance has been heading up and Omicron's danger has been dropping and these two factors met in the middle and then passed each other, at which point the country deemed it more beneficial simply to carry on like we're back to normal again. And there's another tipping point as well, and that's how many people have had it. So many people were exposed to it over the Christmas period, it feels like we must have all encountered the disease at some point or another. Some of us may have fallen ill, some of us didn't. But now feels less dangerous than it was in December, so we might as well just carry on the way we were. I've been a bit behind everybody else with how I feel about things. I spend my time in my room, away from the world, so I suppose the way I behave lags behind everybody else by a week or two. The only person I'm really in contact with is my girlfriend, and she got COVID over Christmas, less than a week after receiving her booster. She wasn't that ill with it. She said it was quite nice to have all that time stuck in her room with no nagging feeling that she should be working. But because she's now effectively immune to the disease, it's changed the way she behaves. Like what's going to happen? Is she going to get Omicron again? So yeah, she's just stopped caring. I started attending more social stuff again, and because she's the one who drags me around, I've gone along with her. I have to admit, COVID has got less important in my life. I no longer feel the need to check the case rates like I would the weather forecast, for example. I chime in once or twice a week just to see how we're all doing. It looks like cases are still high, but much lower than they were a few months ago. It is about as peaceful as you could imagine, following the chaos at the end of 2021. And it doesn't feel like there's much that COVID could do to reignite the measures that we used to have in place for it, unless it mutates to become significantly more dangerous again, which seems unlikely. We went to the shops just the other day. There are still soap dispensers around, but they're harder to find, and sometimes they're empty, which is always horrible because then your hand feels even dirtier. I suppose Morrison's is catered towards older people, and its cafe still had all those barriers up to separate tables from each other. I instinctively took these pictures, knowing that before long stuff like this will probably be done away with, and then there will be no chance to document it ever again. I was pinged on the COVID app. I was informed that I had been in close contact with somebody who had got COVID. When I opened the app up, it also told me that my previous isolation period had ended, which came as news to me. That COVID app was a disaster. One of those things that sound great in theory, but unless everybody uses it, and uses it properly, then it's just going to be more hassle than it's worth. I instinctively went to scan a code recently as we entered the shop and my girlfriend asked me why I was even bothering now that all restrictions had ended. I still did it this time, but I feel it's another one of those things that I'll fall out of the habit of soon. There are still reports of how people in power abused the lockdowns and hosted parties when they shouldn't have been, but I don't feel like anything will ever be done about that. It's not like politicians have ever been seen as role models we should aspire to copy, but that hasn't stopped some people from using their actions as justification for why they shouldn't be following the rules either. Personally, I don't see why Boris Johnson's buffoonery, nor short Dominic Cummings' short-sighted shortcomings, should in any way influence my own behaviour. 
when the people I respect in this country are the scientists and advisors who want what's best for the people in this country. What a bizarre period of my life. Almost two years of terror, boredom and plot twists, and then it ends on such a slow fizzling out. No parties in the street, though I did notice a few riot vans readying themselves for a Saturday night. I guess things really are returning to normal. Covid has split my life up. I struggle to remember back to how I felt before all this happened. It's just too long ago now. It staggers me when I'm reminded of something that happened when it all kicked off, and it feels more like 10 years ago. A lot of things have been cancelled or spoilt by Covid since. For the most part it has been a negative impact on my life, with lingering consequences and bad habits. Though I still look back very fondly at those first few months, when it felt refreshing to be so free of normal work and obligations. Since then, the normal work and obligations have returned, all the while being hamstrung by Covid restrictions. We'll all view Covid differently. For me, it was the dividing line between my 20s and 30s. For some, it was their university experience. Or even the very start of their life when they should have been attending school and socialising with others for the first time. My niece is six. I imagine her memories of this will be fuzzy. But she might still remember the time she recoiled in fear when we came to visit because she had been told to socially distance from others. Or that time she got Covid and had to isolate her home for weeks. I appreciate those of you who have asked me when my next Covid video will be. It seems like some of you have found this series comforting or part of your monthly routine to watch out for. So thank you, that's kind of sweet I guess. I'll swap it out for some other sort of content and it'll be something less controversial because I've never felt so much resentment towards so many faceless people online before. I feel the amount of stupidity I've read has aged me 10 years and I've lost so much faith in humanity and in the government's ability to deal with something like this. Any hope I had of Covid unifying the world against a common enemy was quickly dashed and I've become a much more bitter person because of it. But I hope some good comes from Covid. Most of us won't have learned much, but those who monitor or study diseases must be rubbing their hands at the sheer amount of data that we've collected from this pandemic. Who knows, it might even prepare us better for the next one. The other day I was walking along this bit of coastline, and I realised this was where I was when Covid all kicked off in March 2020. Back then, it was all looming ahead of us, but on this rather windy holiday, it felt very much behind me and I visited all the same places with a new perspective. Have I helped with this pandemic at all? Has this video series given people something small to look forward to, or an opinion that they can measure theirs against? Will it be something that people can look back at, to remember where they were at certain points during the pandemic? Yeah, why not? So I look to the future and wonder what sort of content could replace this series, while being a more positive part of people's lives, something that isn't controversial or hateful. If I'm honest, I enjoyed not making a January video, and not having my inbox full of people arguing about it. I'm not happy with how many people I've alienated with this series. I have seen long term fans of this channel grow to resent me, and for that resentment to become negative comments on all my videos, and to branch out well beyond this series, or indeed, just this channel. I've had to block some people from all of my YouTube channels, others from Twitter. I've even deleted long term friends from Steam because they'll randomly message me out of the blue, and it quickly becomes apparent that they see me as an enemy, and now despise me as a person. That sort of stuff has been dying down since the beginning of this year, which I think indicates the masses have moved on to something else now. Covid doesn't impede their life enough to even pick fights about it anymore. Of course, we're now all focused on the Russian-Ukraine situation that's unfolding. Any time I used to spend looking at Covid has been swapped out for that instead. For the people living in this country, Covid sort of ended for us a few months ago, and officially just a few days ago, but I think we'll remember it as being when Russia invaded Ukraine. But yeah, it feels like another chapter for the Click Empire is coming to a close. And I look forward to this channel becoming a friendlier place again, that people look to for enjoyment instead of a battleground.